like every shot I took, I was like, this is the best photo I've ever taken. (laughs) (laughs) And it just made me realize that something so small can really make a shot freaking amazing. Welcome to New Watermark Photography Podcast, an international offering of Simarca de Agua, a podcast for professionals and enthusiasts to connect and share their stories. I'm Jessica Duque, food photographer and your host. This podcast is brought to you by Sigma, sigmabenelux.com Soho, Brand Studio Whiteybackdrops.com Tether Tools Food Media House Photo Fleets Hey, and we have here Linda Vanderkamp, an amazing photographer, branding photographer, and makeup artist. So, hello, Linda, how are you? Hello, Jessica. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. I've seen your work through uh, another uh, friend via Instagram, and I cannot believe your style is so powerful, so magical, and it has color. And can you tell us a little bit about uh, you and your work, please? I am a personal branding photographer, um, and I work solely with female entrepreneurs, um, which partially has to do with the fact that I also do makeup. I'm also a makeup artist. But aside from that, um, it really has to do with the fact that I've always wanted to start my own business. From a young age, I always said, I want to have my own business. I had no idea which direction I really wanted to go in. But then at some point in my life, I just um, kind of came uh, in front of a crossroads. And I was like, I had to decide whether I wanted to um, really do a job that had something to do with my studies or if I was going to pursue my business. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what do I have in my skill set that I can kind of turn around and make a business out of? And at that time in my life, I was like, photography has always been a big hobby of mine. Mm -hmm. And that was basically from a really young age, from when I was like 12. My mother is a very fanatic hobby photographer. So That's kind of how I started doing photography at first. Um, And I did a course in makeup um, a few years before. So I figured if I combine those things and then start working with a group of people that will maybe open doors for me in the whole world of entrepreneurs. Yes. Then I can kind of start building a network and kind of go from there and see if this is really what I want, or maybe kind of change my direction from there. But I was like, okay, I can do photos. I can do makeup. I'm just going to take pictures of female entrepreneurs, start building my network. And it was kind of a shot in the dark. Like, I was like, I just want to get to know people, you know, I just want to start Mm -hmm. building a network. And it just turned out to be the best decision I could have made because uh, it's just the best, best, um, uh, best group of people to work with everyone is so inspiring and everyone has a really special story so um yeah that's how I started working with them and to be honest when I first started I had no idea what I was doing that was about two and a half years ago yes and um I really had to do a few practice shoots with my friends before I even had enough um confidence confidence to do a shoot with a client first few shoots I was absolutely shitting myself (laughs) (laughs) and I was like did I make the right decision I'm so nervous like uh, but that went away so quickly because I just found out that the whole process of having like such a personal personal experience with your client Mm -hmm. and it's really it's really quite intimate to have a one-on-one photo shoot with each other and even I also do their makeup before you know so you're really in each other's bubble quite literally yes and I really enjoyed that whole personal aspect of it and then making someone feel comfortable trying to bring that out on camera as well and 
yeah it's just it it for the first time in my life it clicked and it felt like this is what I need to be doing and I think from that moment on I started kind of building my style because I didn't have any mm. like particular style in the beginning I think especially looking back I was like yeah no it's just all a bit plain and stuff but <laughs> <laughs> it was like you have to start somewhere um and only after I kind of understood the basics and I was like yeah okay now I kind of know how to work with light now I kind of know how to make people feel comfortable is when I felt comfortable enough to start trying new things and to start incorporating more color and to start working on diff like in different types of locations yes so to start renting out daylight studios um to start working with with artificial lights sometimes you know and that's when my style started started developing and now actually it's getting i have more of a style on the one side yes but on the other hand i have it's starting to really diversify a lot yes so whereas in the beginning i did a lot of um more neutral shoots yes you could you could say my style was more clear in the beginning mm -hmm. but now I really I think what my style mainly is is I really look at the person in front of me and really try to think of a concept that matches that person and their business mm -hmm. and then the results are actually very um variable yes so I don't really do one certain style anymore. Um, I think the main thread, like red thread in my um, shoots is that I really focus on the energy of the person who is in front of me. And that obviously can lead to very different mm -hmm. results. Is but I'm what not... I can see? Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is what I love when I saw your your portfolio and your insta feed like oh my god i mean she she works with the energy of the person and build a whole concept around that person so every photo is different because every personality is different yeah still with your on touch yeah exactly i think that that's definitely my my signature what people tell me about my pictures is that they can really see like powerful women in these pictures yes. and like the energy of, of the people in your pictures is is so good and so contagious. And I want that too, you know, that's what people tell me. And then I'm like, yes, that's, that means that I'm succeeding at what I want to do. <laughs> it's amazing what you have done so far and in a short time, like, because you just said you, you started like two years and a half. Yeah. And the evolution is like unstoppable. Like every time you are proving and, and showing that you can do more and more and more you know different things and amazing stuff and the use of color i have to say is wonderful oh, thank you so much <laughs> thank you so can you tell me how do you believe that makeup and photography can impact someone else's self-confidence in the sense that you you know like you mentioned with your academic background you have an academic background in psychobiology yeah. and nutrition mm -hmm. and how can influence your work can you explain me or can you explain us um uh, if these fields have shaped your approach and personal branding, photography and makeup artistry, like does it have a relationship? Yeah. Oh, for sure. A, actually quite a strong relationship, which I didn't really plan it like this. So my background is um, I uh, went to a university for a bachelor's in psychobiology and a master's degree in nutrition and health. Mm -hmm. And I actually never really knew what I wanted to do. As you know, I wanted to be a psychiatrist at first because I'm really um, interested in how the mind works mm -hmm. and how um, how to become the best version of yourself. That has kind of always been something that really interests me that I've tried I try to learn about for myself as well. Mm -hmm. But that translated to I found it really interesting in other people too. Like how, why do we do the things we do? Why do some people end up in a really bad place in their life and some people in a really good place? 
and what influences the decisions we make. So I wanted to be a psychiatrist and I started off, so I wanted to do medicine actually, mm -hmm. but I was not chosen uh, for that bachelor. So I had to choose something else. So I ended up doing psychobiology because yeah, that was kind of learning about the brain and about behavior and found that really interesting. But quite soon I discovered that the whole theoretic academic world didn't really feel it didn't click yet mm -hmm. I wasn't like oh yes this is so interesting I want to do this the rest of my life but I, th I thought that the subject was very interesting so I kind of um so I had my bachelor's took a year off yes did makeup school in that year because I figured I'm not sure yet what I want to do next one thing I know I love and I had been doing that also from a very young age is makeup. So I was like, I'll just go to makeup school and <laughs> we'll see what happens, you know? So did makeup school, loved it, but still there wasn't that click that was like, that's it. I'm going to be a full-time makeup artist in the fashion industry, because that was kind of the world I was in with that um, makeup uh, mm -hmm. school thing. So after that, I decided to do a master's degree because, well, in the Netherlands, if you have a bachelor's degree, that's not worth a lot. Like it only becomes like you have to kind of finish it with with a master's degree. Yes. So I figured, what else do I like? <laughs> I like eating. So <laughs> I love to just do nutrition. No, I was always like I had my phase where I was kind of like a foodie mm -hmm. and I was like eating really healthy food and taking pictures of it, of course, taking pictures of it as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was already a hint, I guess. Um, and as like, I really, that was kind of part of that whole interest in how to make the most of your, your life, of your, your body, like how to, to um, nourish your body mm -hmm. in a way that will make you feel like your absolute best. Yes. And even though I also thought this was a very interesting subject, um, you really learn how to be like a researcher and it's all very theoretical and it just didn't feel complete for me. Like it didn't feel, um, again, like I saw myself doing this for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. but in hindsight, looking at psychobiology, um, looking at nutrition and health. And that's how I was thinking about it at that time as well. I was like, clearly I, I want to like know how I can make myself and other people feel good. Mm -hmm. Like I want to know, I always thought it was interesting to, um, learn about how I can influence behavior in, well, in myself, but also in others. Um, and I was just kind of looking back on my life, thinking, what are things that in my personal experience really helped me or really, I really enjoyed to the core, you know, and I have been, um, interested in photography and makeup from super young age. So I've been doing it from probably since I was about 12 years old. Yes. Or even a bit younger, I, I always used to do um, fo styled photo shoots with my friends when I was still in primary school. And it was quite hilarious, actually, when you see the, the <laughs> results. <laughs> but that was something that I did out of sheer fun. I was like, this is the most fun thing I can think of to do right now. So yeah. that was one of my earliest hobbies, I can remember. And then when I started hitting puberty myself, I um, kind of became, well, as you kind of do in puberty, like I was very self-conscious. Uh, my confidence was not through the roof whatsoever. I started getting a bit of acne, you know, and uh, kind of at the same time, my interest in makeup started partially because I was insecure and I just wanted to make myself look pretty. 
Yes. But I definitely enjoyed the whole creative part of it as well. So really not just making a pretty makeup, but like really going crazy on colors and glitter and whatever. And it kind of felt like a waste to just take it off my face and just nobody would ever see it. So I would take pictures of myself. And um, that was before selfies were a thing, just yes. here. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't just put like position my phone and take pictures. No, I had to like, had like this old camera. Yes. And uh, I actually ended up using that for a very long time. It was a Nikon D40. Uh-huh. Um, and it was like four megapixel or something. I don't remember exactly, but uh, it was actually great. And would take pictures of myself, edit them, retouch them quite heavily, to yeah. be honest. Um, but the whole process of making an image of myself where I looked so, well, in a way different than I saw myself in the mirror in the morning when I woke up. I just saw myself as this person that was like, who is that girl, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I want to be her. And it, I've always described it as kind of a, a super um, real life way of visualizing your future, you know? Yes. So visualization, I think, is a really strong tool to kind of decide where you want to go, kind of. Um, picture your future and work towards yes. something and I literally saw this person that I knew I was and wanted to be saw her on my screen and that had has had such a big impact on me and on my confidence that I was just kind of convincing myself like this is the person that you are it's not the insecure girl you see in the mirror you know mm -hmm. So when I was looking back at my my past and kind of realizing that I had such a big love for creating things, for makeup, for photography, then after, like, when I finished my master's, I worked in hospitality for like a year, a year and a half, just kind of figuring out my yes. life. And... Then right before COVID hit, I decided that I wasn't very happy in my job anymore and I needed to start working on an, a plan B. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started building my website because I was like, like I said earlier, like, what can I do? I can take photos. I can do makeup. I'm just going to start a personal branding photography business and see what happens. So that's what I did right before COVID and then COVID hit. Oof. So my website was launched. Um, I was ready to take on clients basically. And then COVID hit. But actually for me, that was kind of a blessing in disguise because I ended up um, not being able to work and then um, was like at home for about a month, which gave me a lot of time to actually work on my business because yes. I was still getting paid and did that went really well um ended up booking my first few clients and then I started working in my hospitality job again and quite soon after I got fired yeah <laughs> so at the time I was like oh but you know shit and now it just feels like quite a big life change because it was my full-time job at the time. It was a push you needed to, you know, continue. Well, yeah, I yeah. think so. It ended up being the exactly what I needed at the time. Yes. Because after that, I just decided to go for my business and um, was getting paid by the government a little bit. But after about a month or two, I didn't need that anymore and started working as a photographer full, full time that's amazing sounds like a great story and I, I believe like um you know when you know you are good I mean you have some self-doubts like okay if is, is it going to work because we are used to or we are like wired like you need to have an stability you need to have a, a salary at the end of the month to cover yeah. everything that you need to survive 
but um, you don't realize that you can do that by yourself, like, you know, but sometimes we need that kind of push, like, okay, go for it. Yeah. Like, what are you, what are you waiting for? What's your excuse now? And that's, yeah, uh, exactly. Like, it's now or never. That was my feeling. Yeah. It's like, this is the perfect scenario to start really taking this business seriously. If I go for a job now, I probably won't be able to make a success out of this business anytime soon. So it's now or never. Exactly. So can you tell me or can you uh, describe what's your process when you're working with a new client? How do you capture their personality and essence through your photos? I understand uh, the, what you mentioned that uh, you work uh, basically as a psychologist. <laughs> and then you analyze that person and what that person can bring to the table and how far you can go or experiment with that person. But how is your process? So... I my platform f through which I find my clients is Instagram mm -hmm. and I'm quite active in stories for instance so I record myself talking to the camera a lot which causes people to so they follow me and they already kind of get to know me yes so when usually when they come through Instagram and they book a shoot they already have a feeling like okay sh I, I'm gonna like this girl you know And in many cases, it's also the other way around. So in many cases, we've already had a bit of contact. I already know like, oh, this person is nice. She's probably going to book a shoot with me at some point. Yeah. <laughs> and Like, um, like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I you. like you already when I saw yeah. like, oh my God, I have to work with this lady. She's amazing. Yeah. If only it's like you have purple hair and I have pink hair. It's like, <laughs> in heaven. Um. So yeah, I already know them a little bit and then they send me a message and we instantly, we just book a call through Zoom because um, I I don't like calling on the phone. I mm -hmm. hate it, to be honest. I want to be able to see somebody's face. Yes. So uh, we have a call through Zoom that is usually uh, at first kind of like a get to know each other call. So that's like a short one. And um, we basically just kind of tell each other a little bit about our story and decide do we want to work with each other? Yes or no? I have to say, because we usually already know each other a little bit, mm -hmm. nine out of 10 times, it's a yes. Because if someone doesn't really like what I show on social media, then they're not going to ask me exactly. for a call, you know? Yeah. So in that call, we actually make an appointment for the next call, mm -hmm. which is more like a strategy session. Okay. So I send them a questionnaire and um, ask them to um, prepare a Pinterest board mm -hmm. um, with just basically images that spark their interest, um, that they like the style of. I already, I always say, don't think about what's possible or what's not possible. Just post anything that you like and you think is going to be a match with what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So then we have the call and just discuss everything that they said and then um, decide on all the practical things that we need to do. So maybe we need to book a hairstylist. Maybe we need to book a location. Um, maybe we need um, someone to be at the shoot as well, because yes. maybe we have to take a picture with someone in the background or whatever. So all the practical things we decide then. And then between that moment and the shoot, um, I'm always available for them to ask questions, for them to maybe send me pictures of their outfits or like uh, I really like to help them kind of be confident in the in the whole um, process before the shoot as well and yes. not kind of leave them hanging you know mm -hmm. um, so then shoot day and to be honest most shoots I am um, is just me and them yes sometimes it's there's a, a ha hairstylist there um I'm kind of getting to a point now where I would like to work with assistants more often, um, but haven't really done that yet. So it's usually a nice small group. And like I said, it's quite intimate. So we start with the makeup and we always take our sweet time because mm -hmm. <laughs> I just, well, to be honest, that's one thing I really love about having my own business. I can just take all the time I want to do something like there's no time pressure, right. which I love. Yes. Um, 
So usually it's about an hour and a half. We have some coffee. We talk a bit. We do makeup. And then we start shooting. And well, like I said, that's going to be super different every shoot. But the one thing, especially the, the shoots that I love most are the shoots where, well, there's lots of color. I just love color. Doesn't even have to be bright colors, but I just love it when there's, there's a hint of color and yeah. color and not just too plain, you know? Yes. So usually it's creative chaos on the set. There's props everywhere. Um, there's like three backdrops lying around somewhere. Um, there's, well, it's just a lot of fun. One thing I find very, very important is that there's just high vibes during a shoot. Um, so we laugh a lot, definitely laugh a lot. I show my clients the pictures in between as well, so they can kind of adjust their posing. And yeah, I'm trying to think like if there's like a technique I use consciously to make people feel at ease. I think if there's one, it is that I kind of act silly myself. Uh -huh. <laughs> so like when I kind of laugh at myself a little bit, I always take the weirdest poses when I take pictures. So sometimes I fall and I kind of milk that because I'm <laughs> like, it just makes people laugh. It makes people relax. Yes. Um. And I think not being in a rush definitely helps as well. So you can just um, really, it takes a while before someone relaxes, you know? Yeah. So my shoots usually last a few hours. Um, and the best shots are usually taken kind of in the middle when people are at their highest energy, they're most yes. relaxed. And then they get a bit tired. So the best shots are usually in the middle of the in shoot. In the middle. Yeah. I, I can imagine your cooling process. Like uh, your, uh, what, what I do is like I go from the left, from the last one. And then I, like you said, like in the middle. So this is where yeah. you can find the treasure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So um, you basically what I like about your uh, your business model, one of the things, well, one of the, the the many things that I like about your business model is uh, your package, your packages. Hmm. So you yeah. have like three different packages. Yeah. If you go to uh, blinkphotography.com, you can find, uh, okay, the three uh, offers she got is the Explorer, the Pioneer, and the Icon. And all the details are explicit there. So they're really well explained and, and what's going to happen and what are you going to get? So this is really honest. I love it. Like not everybody's like, you know, publishing their prices and, and sharing them with, with the audience. So this is really honest and is what you see is what you get basically, yeah. or maybe a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, That's what I go for at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Her social is a uh, Instagram is blink underscore or yeah. Yeah. Uh, photography. So you yeah. can find that there. I'm going to leave it everything on the description box of this episode. And uh, then you can find her on her website and her main platform that is Instagram. Okay. Going back to this interview, I would like to ask you if you can share with us a memorable uh, or particular experience, client experience that you said, oh, I like this, or maybe, oh, it happened that. Yeah, there's so many. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just going to tell you about this thing. I That's not really a, a gig that I did myself or like a shoot that I organized. But uh, last summer, I went to this big um, portfolio weekend mm -hmm. in America. Oh, wow. In, nice. in Utah. It's organized by Marina Williams. She's a quite a well-known portrait photographer who has a very colorful style and a very recognizable style so yes. when you see pictures like oh that's from Marina and I'd been following her for a long time and she organized this portfolio weekend you had to register for it and it's very popular so I was never I never expected to be chosen <laughs> mm -hmm. but in the end I did get chosen and was extremely excited and this was this was the weekend that kind of um turned my whole business upside down I'd say because she basically organized 10 styled photo shoots in one weekend and all super different vibes but they were all really colorful really creative but also quite simple in a way yes 
she would maybe she would have in one set she would have one really cool piece of styling in a nice outdoor setting for instance in the other shoot she would have pretty like minimal styling but with a really cool painted backdrop or mm -hmm. something and that would absolutely make the shot so awesome so she kind of made me realize that you don't you definitely don't need all the top gear the best locations the the coolest most expensive props to she did everything herself she yes. diy all her props and the results like every shot i took i was like this is the best photo i've ever taken <laughs> <laughs> and just just made me realize that something so small can really make a shot freaking amazing so after that and after like showing the results on my on my socials as well my bookings just completely changed from being quite safe to people really coming to me for different things yes. for like oh yeah, I saw that you did this I'm sure you can do this too like let's do something crazy let's do something out of the box you know yes so that it doesn't have to be that complicated that's basically what I realized in that weekend and now a word from our sponsor I want to tell you about Food Media House a creative powerhouse that will transform your brand with unique and bold visuals with experience in photography and creative direction they will captivate your audience and bring your vision to life from recipes to food styling they create content for social, web, and marketing campaigns with irresistible visuals. Based in Los Angeles, they collaborate remotely with brands from around the world. Contact now, foodmediahouse.com. Back to the episode. And yes. Well, this is what we try to reinforce in, the, in this podcast. Like, you don't need the most expensive items or uh, gear to make good photography. What you just need to be is like, you know... A little bit out of control. <laughs> that is good, yeah, like yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. Try to experiment. Try to you know uh, make things possible with a few or what what with the things that you have in hand. So, I mean, uh, I, I know a few photographers, great photographers as well, that they don't even have a full frame camera and they make wonders. Yeah. And oh yeah, I can't believe that straight away. Yeah, I have my cameras are definitely not like top notch, yeah. super. I have a Nikon the d6 d610 now yes. which is full frame but it's definitely not the fastest or the i don't even have like um i had i don't even know how you call it because i don't have it but like i focus uh, yeah, automatically yeah. Focus yes, yes yes don't yes, have yes. that i have to like do everything manual and it's it's fine it really it really doesn't matter Nowadays, even with, with phones, you can take awesome pictures, yes. you know? It's really in the eye of the photographer. Yes, exactly. It is all about uh, being creative and passionate about what you're doing, and and, and that's yeah. it. And that's trying it. things that you haven't tried before. Like, I think because of this weekend that I went to, it really showed me that it's okay to try things that you haven't tried before mm -hmm. and that you don't know if they're going to work. Yes. But just kind of have a little bit, have the balls to bring a new technique to a photo shoot and just try it. And if it doesn't work, then you have plenty of other pictures that are good, that are going to work. But just kind of take a leap of faith sometimes and, and um, yeah, use kind of innovative, weird techniques to maybe yes. have like really cool results yes. that no one else has. So are you a big fan of uh, artificial or uh, light or natural uh, light? Well, interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've always taken pictures with um daylight. Yes. I always used to call myself a daylight photographer. Yes. But I think that's also because I just never worked with artificial light before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had no idea. And um I just started experimenting with it actually not too long ago. That's another shoot that really um, made a difference for me. I did a shoot in November where I had this concept in my head with yes. one big artificial, um, like just one big lamp, basically, mm -hmm. bright lamp and some smoke from a smoke machine. And 
I had a bunch of um, example pictures, but I had never done a shoot like that before. And basically I did the shoot and then I I just thought, well, why why have I never used a lamp before? This is pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it doesn't limit your work when you work when when, when you use uh, artificial light. So yeah, it's like quite good. I mean, it, it, if you experiment and if you study it, so you can achieve uh, beautiful results. Also, like daylight. Yeah, exactly. Because that's kind of what put me off of artificial light at first. Because I figured I really love the effect that daylight has and it maybe it's going to be too harsh or it's going to be not realistic or something. Yeah. But, but everything's it's, it's possible. Just, you just <laughs> have to know how to use it. And also, if it doesn't look realistic, who the hell cares? It doesn't mean it can't still look cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, of course, um, daylight has their, you know, its own charm because uh, yeah. you have like magical moments like you cannot repeat. And to me, it happened like, okay, when I see, okay, there's a beautiful light in the studio and then my my mind start like working fast like i grab this grab that like this prop da, yeah. da, 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 da. and then i made this photo that i'm going to show right now and this photo i made is like a, it is a, a cup with a champagne and a macaron and i had a gobo that i put i had like a branch of a palm tree and then i used the light and it was like so magical and the shine and everything was like boof try to do that with artificial light try to recreate that photo maybe it's possible but it's not like you know like it has this if you have like a magic daylight moment yes. it is yeah it never quite comes back in the exactly. same way yeah. and i cannot repeat that photo i mean i i can you know imitate that photo with artificial light but it's not going to be the same like no no, no. that light was special you know yeah and that's obviously it's very nice if you work with a client and you can mm -hmm. give them a picture that no one else is going to have that picture because it was a magical daylight moment. Yes. But on or the other hand... a golden hour. Or a golden hour. If it's golden hour, whatever. Yes. But then if you can control your light on such a level that you can create super cool, unique lighting yes. just with artificial lights, mm -hmm. then you've got, you've got the power, you know? Yes. Amazing. Amazing. I love what you just said. Uh I'm going to quote you. Yeah. <laughs> you can quote me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm not there yet myself, unfortunately, but we'll get there this year, hopefully. Mastering the artificial light. Amazing. I I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to make it. Um, I see it already. You are doing a great job. I mean, you're, you're really passionate about what you're doing. So tell me something. I saw uh, last night a TikTok about how portrait photographers deal with some clients. Maybe you have this experience. Mm -hmm. And the abuse of filters. There's a new filter uh, uh, on TikTok. It's called uh, Bold Glamour or something like that. And, you know, then you can pass your hand here and anything's happening. So the thing stays like, okay, this is the evolution oh, really? of filters. Oh, gosh. And this photographer was explaining like how frustrating it is sometimes when you make a session with a client and then the client sees the, the reality versus what the client is used to do with, you know, with his, their own photos and filters. Yeah. So do you have any experience? Because you just mentioned uh, during the interview that you show the, the client, okay, how is it going? Look uh, how you look like, but in the end, and you deliver the photos. There's also a, a thing that we hate as photographers is when the, the client, oh yeah, they're beautiful. And they end up like adding filters and filters and post-production, but by yeah, themselves. That's horrible. Yeah. I To be honest, I, I used to have this sometimes in the beginning. Yes. Because I think in my own communication to my clients, there was, I fell a bit short. I didn't really mention it too clearly or too often so that I mean, people, sometimes people just don't know, you know, mm -hmm. so at first I didn't really um, communicate it clear enough, I'd say. Yes. So it happened a few times. I must say, I've never really had someone who put like ridiculous filters over it, luckily. Um, but I've had it a few times and usually it wasn't bad enough for me to be like, okay, I'm definitely gonna, gonna mention this. Sometimes it was quite subtle and I was like, you know what? it's all right <laughs> just 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 go <laughs> and now that i've 
So I did have it a few times. I was like, okay, how can I make sure that it, this doesn't happen anymore? Mm -hmm. So I put it in basically all my emails. It's it's in my general terms and conditions now. Um, I um, During a shoot, almost always, because you spend like a whole day together usually, um, it kind of comes um, in the conversation yeah. at some point. So I just mention it to them in real life and kind of not, I'm, I'm never like, don't put a filter over my photos. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm like, just kind of explain the whole thought process behind it, you know? So like, I I edit my photos quite a bit, but like in a natural way. Yes. And I really love the editing process. Um, And it just, it takes me a lot of time also to edit, you know? So that's kind of how I try to bring my point across to say, like, I have, a, I'm very particular about my editing. Yes. I've tried having other people do my editing and so far it hasn't worked because I'm like, nah, mm, I just prefer <laughs> doing it myself. You want to keep your essence uh, in the yeah. whole thing. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. that's really important to me. And I've been lucky with my clients, I think, where uh, it just hasn't really happened a lot for me. And I do have to say that I think I might be a bit a bit more flexible in what people can do with my pictures compared to some other photographers I know. And I completely understand when it's like, oh, please don't do anything to my pictures. Mm -hmm. But for myself, sometimes because it's branding photography, yes. sometimes it's nice if they can add something of their branding to a picture to add like a graphic elements or maybe change the background yes. or... <laughs> Um, I always give my pictures in color and black and white, so they don't have to use a black and white pic um, filter. Mm -hmm. um, but I I do understand that, and if it's if it's a nice addition, and if it's like if it looks cool, then I'm like, yeah, do whatever you want to my picture. <laughs> but <laughs> it hurts my feelings when it happens. Yeah, it's like yeah. I untag me from that photo. <laughs> yeah, no, I do. I completely understand, especially if the result doesn't resonate with you anymore and you're just like no this is no longer my picture but I, I yes. also have a question for you because when it happens to you do you tell the client or do you well, untag yourself and just forget about it I mean I I mean when the other pictures but uh when they do what they want to do in the end this is what they believe okay they are my pictures I do whatever I want and then they do a wrong cropping and sometimes I just approach them like okay do you want me to give them a proper crop for Instagram for example this is what I do because you are missing you know what is important here they don't know about the rule of thirds they don't know about golden ratio they don't know about anything yeah how is the the, the composition itself and how can you you know make this picture be powerful mm -hmm. and this is what I do mostly when I see like a wrong cropping it's like mm, can I help you with this and then I take the pictures I crop them yeah. and then I send it because in the end it's like it is my work and I want the, my work to look good yeah but um I mean I think it's more difficult when it when it's about photographing people because yes. uh, I had a client uh, that said to me, oh, yeah, we were having fun making a photo shoot with colors and lights and this and that. And then, oh, my God, I love them. And then when I deliver the photos, I try to do like a natural retouch. Like, OK, if you have an imperfection, maybe I can cover it. Things like that. Mm -hmm. But, oh, my God, your camera is dangerous. I can see the whole thing, like the, the wrinkles and stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And this client was like really particular and he added some filter because he's used to see himself as this you know perfect yeah. person <laughs> uh -huh. and then okay I, there's nothing I can do about it yeah I mean it's, it's their own perception is I think it's the consequences of social media and all those filters that you know like they're messing up our brain and our own perception how we look yeah how we look I do have to say that I think um, when I think of pictures of myself, for instance, mm -hmm. that are like mostly just like like a close up. So if I take a picture of my own face really close up in that picture, I see a lot more detail yes. than I would ever see in real life. <laughs> yes. Like 
a camera really does put your face under a magnifying glass, you know? Yes. And usually it's really sharp and maybe the lighting wasn't ideal. So there's like weird texture that you don't normally see. It's there. Yes. But you don't see it as much. So I think that's why I do really like, um, I really make a point of doing a natural retouch. Mm-hmm. And I would say it it does change quite a bit from the non-retouched version to the retouched version because I kind of want people to see the same thing that they see in real life. Mm-hmm. I just kind of like to take the sharp edge of that the camera gives because it really does show everything, you know? <laughs> yes, it is, it is, it is. But I mean, like I told you uh, before we started this conversation, like... I like photographing food because food yeah. does what I like, you know, <laughs> and then I don't have to tell you like smile. No, I make yeah. the food smile as I like. Yeah. This is, it's, it's different. I it like that different. as well. I make the food smile. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Then, you know, and I make the food camera ready. Like, okay, this is your best angle. Let's yeah. Go for it. Yeah, it yeah. is difficult. It is difficult to uh, to work with people and their their own perceptions and you know and what they have in mind versus what you can you know propose. And yeah, it is difficult. I understand that, and I'm not an easy person to be in front of the camera because um, okay, lately I accepted myself like okay, this is me. I have gray hair. I have like extra kilos, but you know I have people who love me and the way I am and the way I look and in the end it's like you know if I feel good I don't care what everybody you know else is thinking of me like yeah me. and I also believe that a, a photo shoot if done correctly <laughs> yeah. can really boost your confidence yes in, in a very b- big way yes um because it can show you see yourself from in a different light. Yes. Like seeing yourself in a picture is so different yes. from seeing yourself in a mirror. And if you have a good match with her photographer, then he or she can really make you look at yourself in a way that you're like, oh, whoa, is that, <laughs> is that really me? Oh my gosh, okay, I guess it's not that bad after all. <laughs> you know what happened to me every time I have a photo shoot or something, I sleep really, really bad. And yeah. then you can see it on the pictures. It's like well, no matter. I mean, the photographer is well. good, but it's not their fault. It's my fault. I get really anxious about like tomorrow, so I'm gonna be you know picture sick, and then then I cannot sleep, and I'm thinking what I'm gonna do, what I'm going to you know. And it is. Do you have any recommendations before a photo shoot? What do you recommend your your client like? Uh, I remember uh, one of my my favorite uh, photographers, Maike. She gives you uh, Maike Fass. We had it as uh, uh, one of the guests in the first season. She's uh, she gives a list. Okay, this is the mood board. Um, maybe try to find a clothes like this, like that. She gives recommendations because you know about nutrition and and how it works and how this affects your brain. Do you maybe say, okay, try the you know the night before or five days not drinking wine or alcohol because your skin, or try to hi- uh, hydrate your body and drink a lot of water previous to session and don't eat sugar because you can get like bloated. Mm-hmm. Do you recommend something like that? Yeah, I have a a brochure that I send um to my new clients and it has some tips on styling for instance so what kind of prints to avoid what kind of colors to yes. avoid and there's also like a little skincare section in there so yes. definitely says try drinking a lot of water um if you don't use a moisturizer might be worth just buying a one that's not too harsh because you don't want to like change your whole skincare routine one week before yeah. the photo shoot. That's not very smart. Yes. But maybe do a face mask the night before. Um, make sure you have your outfits ready to go the day before. Don't go ironing all your outfits on the shoot day because that will make you stressed. You know. Yes. <laughs> Just yes. <the> thing, <laughs> because it's people like to have a little um, kind of to do list. I yes. guess gather your props. Uh, like the latest the night before yeah um, and yeah also just I but I really try to put the focus on we're just gonna have a lot of fun on the shoot day so also 
don't stress too much, you know. I yes. also do your makeup, so I'm I'm gonna make sure you look absolutely gorgeous. Um, it, you're gonna be nervous at first for sure, because everyone is. But after that, like we're just gonna have a little coffee, have a little chat, and we're just gonna have a great time. <laughs> and that that also just helps people relax a little bit more because they definitely feel that I am very relaxed about it, and I'm like. We're just gonna have. We're just gonna have a great time. Like, don't worry about it. <laughs> well, one of the things that I try, I try to avoid is like having a photo shoot when I'm having, you know, those days of the month. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm, I try to book the a photo like after because it's like when your skin is like glowing and yeah. <laughs> I, I I see myself. It's like mm, I look good like for a photo like today. <laughs> My yeah, skin is that perfect. is actually quite smart. If I would have to give, because normally I'm like. Timing doesn't really matter mm -hmm. um, because there's always going to be a reason not to do it. There's You're never going to have your dream weight. Yeah. Um, maybe you're going to be a bit tired. Maybe your hair doesn't really do what you want or whatever. But if it's possible, plan it around the time of the month. Because <laughs> <laughs> you just don't feel your best. Yeah, it's just... The, yeah. just well, it, it differs per person, I guess, but yes, yeah, it is. It it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's a little tip there. Yeah, for, little tip. <laughs> a little tip. <laughs> okay, and to close this uh, wonderful interview, can you tell us what are your goals uh, for the future uh, for your business, and do you have any projects coming up? Um, so this year I really because last year I I organized a big event, um, in what was it September, so that took up quite a big. A chunk of my year mm -hmm. so this year I really want to focus on my photo shoots and on um, basically mastering artificial light that's like yes. my my big um, practical goal of the year yes. and I'm actually currently doing a project kind of like a side project where it has a lot to do with the things we talked about earlier um, with retouching and everything because mm -hmm. I want to I kind of felt like my my work was leaning more and more towards quite glamorous quite over the top quite which I love mm -hmm. but because I started doing photography basically from a point of being insecure and mm -hmm. kind of wanting to maybe hide my my blemishes and stuff I figured I really wanted to do a bit more of that in my my daily work again So what I'm doing now is I've invited a few women to my studio. So I have a little home studio that I'm sitting in now. You can see it. Yes. Um, invited a few women over to um, take pictures without makeup. Mm -hmm. So I have a little backdrop hanging here, like the olive green one, my favorite. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to take pictures of them complete. Like they will have, you see their shoulders and they're bare and no makeup. And I want to do that to a whole, um, like invite a whole bunch of women to my studio to do that with. Yes. Kind of photos in the same style, all without makeup. And I'm not quite sure yet how I want to bring this out into the world, but I want to make kind of a big thing out of it. Maybe make prints of the pictures, maybe try to get to get it exposed somewhere. And um, yeah, just kind of shine a light on how people actually look without makeup, oh, makeup without filters because the pictures are absolutely stunning like they're yes. they're beautiful women and they don't need retouching it's sometimes nice to have like a glamorous super smooth picture of yourself yeah. but we don't need it you know we're I we're good know. as we are i yeah. know and you know what when i when i moved in like 15 years ago to this country i was surprised how beautiful dutch girls are and they don't wear makeup. Dutch girls don't wear a lot of makeup. No, I wear so, more than the average. Yeah. They are so pretty with their, you know, maybe a little bit, but you don't see it. And uh, I learned a little bit from, from, from this culture, like not caring a lot about the exterior. And um, well, not now I'm having makeup today, but <laughs> normally, 
normally I'm, I'm without makeup. So maybe a little bit like corrector here or there, a little blush yeah. and, you know, glossy and, and that's it. But uh, I feel and I felt so comfortable when I came here because I come from a country, Venezuela. You must know that it's like... Yeah. Most of the time it's like plastic fantastic because we have this ideal yeah. of beauty and beauty queens and beauty pageants and this and that. And 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 I remember when I was living there, I was not uh, on flat shoes or sneakers. No. Never. <gasps> Your Never. feet must thank you now that you're here. Yes. And also... <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't and I was like running to catch the metro or whatever with heels and I'm was... so happy that uh, okay here you can wear boots and you can wear sneakers and it is yeah. not necessary to you know feel glam and fancy just because you're wearing a pair of high heels no so. no it's it's not like even here especially in my my friend group if you come to a gathering and you're wearing like really high heels people basically be kind of looking at you like whoa <laughs> what's the occasion girl the occasion? where are your sneakers <laughs> yeah. I, I like it here to be honest it's like more real and I, I appreciate the and also the, the honesty of the culture I, I love it I love yeah, it yeah pretty straightforward yeah, yeah in my country we, we, we garnish the truth like you know oh, yeah? flowers and bees <laughs> <laughs> no there's nothing of that in here no amazing well Linda I'm so happy to have you here I, I'm really honored to have you uh, as one of my guests and to show your work to the photographers community and to this audience I cannot be more thankful thank well you. same here thank you so much it was such a fun talk Yes, and I hope we can see your project uh, real soon. I hope we can go to a gallery to see. Oh, the, I hope know, so. That would the be Naked awesome. Truth of by Linda van der Kamp. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. The naked Truth. Yeah. yeah. Use Amazing. that. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much to all the audience for uh, listening and for watching this episode. And um, I'll remind you, Linda, uh, social media is blink underscore photography and her website is uh, blinkphotography.com so yes. you can uh, see her work uh, in uh, both uh, platforms and you know book a session you're gonna yeah. have fun thank you so much thank you so i'll see you on the next one bye bye <laughs>